Tonight on America's Dumbest Criminals. These thieves think they got a car, but they're about to discover that the cars got them. Will this man buckle under the pressure of explaining the blood the officer found nearby? And have you ever wished the bank was open when you wanted it to be? This crook does. Place yourself under house arrest for the next 30 minutes. Sit back and enjoy feeling smarter than America's Dumbest Criminals. Daniel Butler and Debbie Allen. Hi there, thank you. Well, according to FBI projections, three out of four houses will be broken into in the next 20 years. Oh, well, that explains it. Oh, let me guess. <laughs> you think that explains why people would want to live in the fourth house on a block? No, well, come on, don't be silly. How could you know whether to start counting from the right or the left of the corner? Oh, why do I even try to have these conversations with you? No, what your statistic explains is why apartments rent for so much. How do you figure that? Well, they're breaking into three out of four houses, Debbie. <laughs> houses. Apparently, the crooks are so focused on houses that apartments are far safer. Thus, they're more expensive. <laughs> okay. Your logic never ceases to amaze me. Uh, don't feel bad, all right? But just try and keep up with us as we introduce our first story. All right. I'll try. They call it a bait car because police use it to lure car thieves into striking and then reel them in. Although it looks like your average SUV, it's better equipped than a space station and far more reliable, I might add. An onboard transmitter tracks the vehicle by satellite and remote controls make it possible to shut the car down when the police are ready to close in. And thanks to this surveillance recording, we have actual thieves providing first-person testimonials of the effectiveness of this crime-fighting technology. Let's see who's been caught on camera. wonder what car thieves talk about? Well, you're about to find out. But suddenly, the joyride loses its joy. Trouble boys? He got the gun now. They must have knew this Absolutely right. And as the endless cast of characters takes the bait and spins the Wheel of Fortune, this morality play reenacted again and again. But remember, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, there's never any reason to panic and say, Now we go from a bait car to a man with a fishy story. You think this is just a red herring? Uh, I think it could be. Here's our Something to Remember Me By Catch of the Week. One day last spring, I was patrolling one of our lakes for fishermen. Came up on a group of people who were fishing at an area that the uh, Department of Natural Resources had recently stopped trout. And I stopped and talked to two of them who were fishing, and they didn't have fishing licenses, so I was in the process of writing them a ticket. I noticed that they seemed pretty excited about getting a ticket, not really upset like most people are. I walked around their vehicle, with one of the people who I'd just written a ticket to and saw a couple spots of blood by their vehicle. Um, I asked the guy if he knew where the blood came from and right whenever I asked him that, he blew his nose. So I sarcastically asked him if the blood came out of his nose and he said no. Uh, while I was in the process of getting ready to search the vehicle, I glanced out of the corner of my eye and saw that he had his finger in his nose digging around pretty vigorously. <laughs> And he soon walked up to me with a tissue with a couple little drops of blood on it and explained to me that, yes, that must be his blood because his nose was blue. Despite the fact that he was able to get a couple little drops of blood out of his nose, I discovered that the real source of the blood was a bucket of illegally caught fish. So then I wrote them a couple more citations and told them to keep their nose clean. 
show may not be as educational as what you'd find on, say, PBS. Well, yeah, but think of the entertainment value, huh? When was the last time the McLaughlin Group debated nose picking? Huh? I really can't answer that. <laughs> well, I don't think they have. We're cornering a market here, Debbie. <laughs> okay. At any rate, we're about to introduce you to a new meaning for the word T-bone. And no, it has nothing to do with stakeouts. To vividly illustrate the term, take a look at this surveillance video from Pinellas Park, Florida. Well, we got information of a, of a guy running around the county. He had attempted to run over a bunch of cops that particular night. He was chased by our deputies. Several cars had been uh, forced off the road. We boxed him in, and we were able to get him to stop after several attempts. One of the deputies uh, T-boned him. Uh, T-bone would be where one car is, is uh, pretty much stationary, and another car comes in, and with the force uh, hits him broadside. And uh, we took one cruiser and just we gave him one heck of a, a crunch and uh, stopped him immediately. But the deputies were pretty, uh, pretty anxious to get this guy in custody. So we didn't really wait to open the door. We just pulled him right out through the window. In Danville, Pennsylvania, fire hydrants must be checked one hour before all fires. Something tells me there's some serious bureaucrats in Danville. Now we travel to Carlsbad, New Mexico, where we find a man who goes postal and steals a stamp machine. And just when it looks like he's licked, he comes up with one of America's dumbest excuses. See what I mean. On routine patrol, myself and another officer pulled into a local restaurant. As we got out of our vehicles, we heard a, a loud crash in the back of the parking lot. So we decided to investigate. At that time, we noticed a person walking across the back of the parking lot carrying a box. I started approaching the, the person. The other officer got in his vehicle and drove around to the other side of the motel. And uh, this subject began to run. So while in foot chase with this guy, he started slowing down because he was carrying the box. So he finally threw it down. I continued to chase him. And as I got up close enough to him, I shoved him down. As he rolled over, he tried to clear himself by stating, Thank God, officer, there, there, there was a man chasing me with a gun. At that time, I said, Yeah, I know, it was me. And he was arrested for stealing a stamp vending machine from the local motel. Detergents make all kinds of powerful claims. They can get rid of ring around the collar, eat odors, and remove barnacles from boats. Actually, I made that last one up. But so far, no one's come up with a truly effective way to launder money. If they had, we wouldn't have this story from Sharps, Florida. The people at this pizza parlor in Sharps, Florida sure know their dough. And not just the kind they roll, they're good with the green kind, too. When two pizzas were delivered to a guest at this motel, something seemed fishy. And it wasn't the anchovies. It was the money used to pay for the pizzas. The edges of the bills were inexplicably pink. So when the driver returned to the restaurant, he asked his co-worker for her opinion. He said, what does this look like to you? And he handed me two $10 bills. And I said, like, like a die pack, you know, exploded from a bank, you know, and we were joking and laughing about it. They called police, who quickly moved in on the man with the funny money. He had a bottle of cleaning fluid by the bathroom sink, and he had most of the money soaking in water with his cleaning fluid trying to uh, get the red dye off of it. Altogether, police recovered $2,400 of blushing bills. It was great. On her show, Martha Stewart extols the virtues of pheasant under glass. It's a good thing, we're told. Well, here at America's Dumbest Criminals, we're not so hoity-toity. But I do know a great recipe for creating turkey under glass. Feast your eyes. We got a call from our dispatch that uh, had a bank alarm at Bank One in the Mojave Valley. I arrived on the scene. I didn't see any cars in the parking lot. It was pretty early. I uh, started going up and checking the business, looking in the windows and everything. When I got to the last window up front, I peeked in and I could see this figure sitting at, looked like a desk right up against the window. Well, all of a sudden the person stands up and he's dressed in full black uh, ski mask and he's wearing all the, the gear and everything and he has a cup of orange juice in his hand. I just told him, let me see your hands and he put them up and I held them there until my backup got there. All of a sudden uh, an alarm call comes out for Deputy Sloma at the uh, bank one. I'm kind of curious, so I start slow rolling that way as backup. I look in the bank and you've got a guy standing there dressed all in black on the other side of the window with an orange juice. 
he's being very cooperative and I didn't even have to ask him any questions. He just instantly started telling me how he cut a hole through the wall and how he knew he was done for and you know then he started apologizing to me for it. So for, for wasting my time, he called it. <laughs> I told him, go in and drop the orange juice. I didn't want him putting his hands down where I couldn't see him. He tells me, uh, well, I don't want to mess up their floor. And I said, well, you just cut a hole through their wall. I don't think they're going to care if you spill orange juice on the floor. So he dropped it. We called for the uh, manager of the bank to come in. We go ahead and open it up, main entry. The only thing he had to say was, how are you? And he said, well, better than you. And now the news, liposuction from the fat of the land. Here's Daniel with ABC Headlines. When a Nashville man who was wanted by police needed a ride, he unwittingly flagged down a detective in an unmarked car. The hopeless hitchhiker offered a bag of crack to the driver in exchange for a lift. <laughs> Bad idea. He got a ride all right, but not to his intended destination. A Florida dentist realized he bit off more than he could chew when he hired two brothers to cut off his finger in an insurance scam. Unable to continue his practice, he received a million dollar settlement from his insurance company and paid the brothers 45,000. Ah, but the boys got greedy and they came back to the dentist for another half mil. Unwilling to keep up the ruse, the dentist filled in the FBI and fingered his accomplices. <laughs> When questioned by officers about a mysterious bulge on her waistline, a Texas woman claimed she was pregnant. But the officers weren't born yesterday, and they were confident that what she was carrying wasn't a baby. And faster than you could say, push! A search revealed her little bundle of joy. It was a three and a half pound bag of cocaine <laughs> taped to her stomach. And that closes the file on ABC headlines. News ripped from somewhere near the back of your local newspaper. Debbie? <laughs> Years ago, the dean at a very conservative college was displeased by the public displays of affection witnessed on the campus. I understand, he said somberly, that there is kissing going on right under our noses. Well, if he was upset about that, what would he say about this? As a sergeant on routine patrol, I stopped, I uh, see this guy sprawled out in the grass and uh, trying to determine what his problem is and he's kind of mumbling to me and I'm trying to get some identification and during that process I find a vial of cocaine and when that happens he comes to right away and says that's not mine, I don't know what happened, I don't know how it got there. So I bring him back to the station and I'm talking to him and we're in a room where the, it's very well lit and uh, he's actually becoming now rather surly about it, indicating that's not mine, I don't have any clue where it came from. And as I'm looking at him, I notice that in his mustache is what appears to be a flake of what I believe to be cocaine. So I didn't say anything to him, I just uh, handcuffed him, went in the other room, got a napkin, wiped across his face and was able to retrieve the flake of cocaine. Took a black marker, circled around it, took it up to the lab. They were able to analyze a single flake as cocaine, and it kind of shot his story out of the water. We were able to get a warrant on it. He was a little sheepish, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, uh, he had his story, and we had the evidence. There's a noticeable difference between driving etiquette in the big city and small towns, okay? The big cities use the car horn to say, what are you, nuts, or move out of the way. In small towns, the horn is used for greetings, shorthand for, how's mama and them? But <laughs> when you're driving drunk, a horn offers the opportunity to tell the world that you've had a few too many. <laughs> See for yourself. It was a Sunday at about 2 in the morning, the end of a Saturday night shift for me, when a call came out where one of our local inebriates had called on the 911 line saying that his mom had kicked him out of the house again and he was too drunk to be walking around in public and was wondering if we'd do him a favor and come out and arrest him for being drunk in public. So being the community service oriented police department we are, we figured we'd oblige him. We drove out and uh, located him at the far end of a shopping center and, and I had my overheads going, the lights and everything on. And on the far side of the parking lot on the complete opposite end is a bar. And this bar was letting out and apparently uh, one of the guys staggered out of the bar, got into his car, and for some reason, drove all the way up behind my patrol car. Hey, get out of the way, I'm trying to get home. Get out. Come on, I don't want to 
I spilled my drink. Well, at this point, I decided that maybe he too needed a little talking to. Walked over, and as I approached him, he said something to the effect of, hey, buddy, I gave you plenty of chances to move your car. I reached in, turned off the car, and uh, we talked to him a little bit more. And needless to say, he was quite drunk as well. So we uh, kind of got two for the price of one that night. Got a friend for you here. Why don't you go ahead and sit up? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Now, let's look back at one of ADC's greatest hits. Unable to escape from the four patrol cars and police helicopter that are in hot pursuit, the suspect's car starts to slow down. Was he up to something? No, he was down to E, as in empty, out of gas. With cars whizzing by, he starts to feel like he's about to be roadkill in Sands Belt Slacks. Then, he sees his opening, makes his move, and dashes gracefully across the highway, before falling headfirst over a short fence, spilling his loot. Now, he may have been a robber, but he was no litter bug. He hurriedly picks up after himself and scurries into the woods. Unfortunately for him, those stylish white slacks made it hard to blend in with nature. Before long, he's face down in the dirt. Who knows if those slacks will ever come clean. <laughs> In Mesquite, Texas, it's illegal for children to have unusual haircuts. We had a call come out that there was a robbery to arrest this guy, and I started to look at him, and I said, I, I know this guy. I've seen him before. And I come to find out that he was uh, the trustee at the police academy where I had just graduated from. I had seen him every day sweeping the floors. Uh, he wasn't finished being dumb, though. When we, when we arrested him, we drove him back to the police department, and he decided that it was time to fight. Right at that time, it was shift change, so we had the second watch going off, third watch coming on, and we also had a reserve police officer meeting, so we had 40 officers on at that time, and this guy got pig-piled. Don't resist, don't resist. Pretty dumb. <laughs> now we come to our final category. Oh, I'll take things that go boom for 500. <laughs> Actually, the topic is we're not making this up, but in this case, they are one and the same. Sit back and prepare for launch from Mission Control in Abilene, Texas. Toward the end of the shift, and we got a call of a, a, an oil tank fire. A young married couple that lived in a trailer near the oil tank battery and a friend of theirs had decided to go out and, and climb up on the catwalk of the, of the oil tank. Do you think it's oil or gas? These aren't small tanks. These hold a couple hundred barrels of oil. I have a lot of... Oh, man, that'll probably... Well, I don't know. Well, yeah, that'll probably... Work. Leaned into the hatch and, and flicked his lighter. And sure enough, he told us later that he saw a fireball. The whole top of the tank blew off. All he saw was orange flame all around, and they were flying from the catwalk to the ground. A short time later, they called an ambulance because they found, they started realizing that they were pretty badly hurt. Unbelievable that somebody could say, I hope this doesn't blow up and then flick a lighter in an oil tank. Yeah. You know, I guess that's why they never held Leonard Skinner concerts at oil refineries. How's that? Well, all it would take is one guy with a lighter yelling, free bird, <laughs> man, and poof, they'd all be gone. Hey, yeah, and I'm sure plenty of guys have gone poof at Leonard Skinner concerts. You think? Really? Uh-huh. And yeah. now it's time for us to go poof, or at least say goodbye. But before we do, we'd like to thank you for joining us and extend our special thanks to the officers who helped us with tonight's show. Law enforcement officers have a tough and often thankless job. But we here at ADC want to go on record as being your biggest fan. And if you're a fan of our show, we'd love to hear from you. You can drop us an email by visiting our website. The address is www.dumbcrimes.com. As always, we hope that we've all learned from others' mistakes. But if you haven't, we just might see you next week on America's Dumbest Criminals. Bye-bye. Yeah.